Come on, somebody in the building, lift up your voice all across the house and shout on the God. You want to shout out to God. Lift up your voice. Lift up your hands. Come on, before the first song is sang, you want to say, God, I'm ready for a downpour. God, I'm ready for the rain to fall. God, I'm ready for your spirit to fall. Lord, I'm ready. We're ready for a downpour. Let it fall fresh. Let it fall fresh on us. We're ready for revival. Let it fall fresh. Let it fall fresh on us. It's coming down. It's pouring.
it's time to get loose in the building because we came for an outpouring. We came for a downpour. six years old and she's come here tonight to be baptized in the only saving name the name of Jesus because you repented of your sins and in obedience to the holy word of God I now baptize this young lady in Jesus name today and he's going to go down in that only name the only name that's ever come down from heaven the name of Jesus because you repented of your sins 
and in obedience to the holy word of God, I now baptize our brother in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of all of his sins.
every project that was destroyed. God brought it back to life. The people who left your church. God's bringing a new crew in. Seeking the Holy Ghost over here. You can be cute if you want to, but you want to say, God, we need your spirit to call because there's people in the house that need the Holy Ghost. The devil is a liar. If you got somebody next to you that needs the Holy Ghost, you want to lay hands on them and say, Tonight's your night, honey. Tonight's your night, sir. Yeah.
neighbor and tell him I'm an overcomer. Come on, look at the other neighbor on the other side and tell him I'm an overcomer. I wonder if there are any overcomers in this house. Anybody got the victory? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, you got to do what we do here on Sunday nights. You got to turn to someone, high five them and tell them welcome to the party. Jesus, hallelujah. It is so great to have everyone in the house of the Lord with us. All the saints of God, we thank you for being here. And we also give honor today to all the ministry that's here. We are so blessed. If you would be seated, I'd like to ask all of the ministry that's in this house. Pastors, evangelists, missionaries. Hallelujah. All the ministry. Can we show honor right now and appreciation? Hallelujah. 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 We're so happy to have Brother Mutu here. Come, Brother Mutu. We want you to greet this congregation. Be seated. Praise the Lord. It's going to be the house of the Lord. We come from Malaysia. Um, it's a small island, but we reach about 29 nations from Malaysia. It's a 1040 window. 2011, we were able to go to a place called Nagaland. Now, when you look into this nation of Nagaland, it's like going back 200 years without running water, without electricity in some places. But when we went there, we saw a group of people, apostolic. It is the fastest, one of the fastest growing apostolic groups and church in the face of the earth. But when you look how they came about to the truth, they did not have any missionaries, no evangelists. What happened was in the 1940, one of the tribe, they have 17 tribes, they are hate hunters. One of the tribe leader was coming back home from hunting and he could not find anything to, to, uh, to bring back to the home. And he saw this huge bird sitting on top of his house, it was a long house, and he was so excited. He said, I'm gonna fix this bird for a meal and take it back home. So he stood down and uh, he was about to pick up a stone and kill the bird. All of a sudden, the bird began to speak in his own language in the tribal language and this is what the bird said the bird said don't you know that i'm a messenger from god and the bird said there is only one god and his name is jesus you need to go you need to get the holy ghost to go to heaven praise god hallelujah 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 where there is no messenger where there is no missionary God is still reaching out to a group of people. The man, the head of the, the head of the clan that heard this tribe, he fall back like a dead man. They carried back home and they laid him in the long house. For three days and three nights he could not speak. But when he got back to his conscience, he said we need to put away every paganism, every witchcraft, every idolatry. He said we need to worship. There's only one God whose name is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, praise God. So all they had was a prayer meeting. They do not know who Jesus is, but all they did was to call upon the name of Jesus on 20, 30, 40, 50. And when they call upon the name of Jesus, the Holy Ghost fell. People were receiving the Holy Ghost and did not know what they were receiving. Later on, the Apostolic Church from the Northeast India sent their pastors and preachers to evangelize. We have over 4,000 apostolic in that place. And we were there before COVID uh, in 2020, praise God. In that conference, in one conference, we had about seven men and women and children that travel all the way from Burma, 
for four nights, four days and four nights. They walk in the terrain, in the forest, in the jungle, in the mountain, just to come for the conference. But when they came, they came to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. But when they came, God had something bigger, something powerful. God filled every one of them with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They went back to Burma and they built three apostolic churches there. Praise God. In that conference, praise God, we had over 197 pastors and leaders in that conference. There were about five young men that were traveling for the conference. You must know that this mountain area, sometimes this place about 12 to 13,000 high above the, the, the sea level. As they were coming around the mountain, after evangelizing to some Trinitarian churches, they baptized two pastors and the whole church in the name of Jesus Christ. As they were coming back, the driver of the car was just, you know, uh, missed the road and he took off above 12,000 feet and he took off the cliff and all of a sudden they were in the open air about to crush into pieces. But in the middle of the air, those young men, those young men who was in the car know the power of the name of Jesus Christ. All they said, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, when they call on the name of Jesus, all of a sudden the four doors flung open. There was an invisible being that came, picked them up, and took them to the side of the mountain. The car came down, crushed to pieces, but all the men escaped. There were not even a scratch on the four men that was in the car. I'm talking about the power of the name of Jesus that is mighty, that is powerful, even in Asia. Hallelujah! Praise God! Hallelujah! Hallelujah. We're so honored to have Elder Mike Tuttle here with us. We love and appreciate him. Longtime missionary to the Netherlands, and now he is over Europe and the Middle East. Brother Tuttle, we want you to come greet this congregation. Let us know what's going on around the world. Praise God! But it, it's always refreshing to come to the Arkansas camp meeting. I want to give honor to Bishop and to Pastor and to the elders that are here and thank God for our ministry. I honor these men and I appreciate the years of service. And I look sometimes, I look at these guys and I see that white stuff on top. But somebody said, somebody said, there might be snow on the roof, but there's fire in the furnace. <laughs> Thank God. Thank God. Also, some of my young men from Europe are here. Brother, Brother Negron from Germany. Brother uh, Andreasen from Norway. Uh, thank you guys for being here and making the effort to come. Great young men, good pastors and missionaries working in Europe. It's, Europe is a challenging place. I, wanna, I just want to share a little bit, uh, of course, also honor my son who's here. He's going to preach tonight, and I uh, thank God for, for that. Amen. I want you to know that I've known him. I've known him all his life. And he started worshiping with about just this, this tall in church. We had a youth camp, youth meeting in France. And he's just, just a little guy, and we're sitting there trying to take care of his little sister, and she's in a little carry thing, and he's out in the middle of the aisle just shouting and dancing around, and we're, so he started this. When, I, I, now, listen, now listen, I'm going to tell you where he got that from. It's because his parents did it. I want you to know, parents, if you want your kids to worship, you worship. If you want your kids to pray, you pray. Praise God. They don't inherit it from the world. They get it from mom and dad. There's got to be an altar in the home. There's got to be an altar at church. They've got to get... Let me just go on. Tell you, just recently, <clears throat> I was in Central Asia 
uh, with, a, with a group of, uh, of our believers and preachers and having a training session. And there were a number of Trinitarians there. At the, end of the, at the end of the seminar sessions, we had 11 people baptized in Jesus' name. Four of them were Trinitarian pastors who had come just to learn and hear about the moving of the Holy Ghost and how they could preach the Holy Ghost baptized in Jesus' name. Also at that meeting, there was a pastor from Moscow, Russia, apostolic pastor, a one God apostolic pastor from Moscow. Uh, and as you know, there's a conflict in Moscow, Russia, and Ukraine. And he, the, 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 and I, let, me, let me interrupt myself on this and say this to you. There, there is a serious cry for prayer for Ukraine. You know about it. You hear about it. Don't forget to pray for Russia. We have pastors, we have ministers. There are one God apostolic Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost filled people in Russia that are suffering. We had a pastor that was put in Belarus that was put in prison for 45 days because he criticized the war effort that Russia was carrying on against Ukraine. Pray for them and thank you for your support so very, very much. This pastor there, I turned around in one of the services and I saw Pastor Alex say, standing in the back of the service, his hands was raised, tears running down his face, and he was just worshiping, he was jumping, he was shouting because he couldn't do that in his country right now. But thank God we have the freedom to shout and worship here. Don't, don't take it for granted. Don't take it for granted. Don't think it's always gonna be like this. One day, one day we could lose something, and I want you to know that you need to take a hold of it tonight and run with it and keep it. And, and before I sit down, I want to just tell you again, I want to say thank you for your support, for, uh, for helping in, in Ukraine, uh, the believers that are there. We have sent in, uh, we've sent close to $300,000 of support. We have, a, we have been able to lease a motel in Krakow, Poland, where we are able to help house refugees that have come out of, uh, of Ukraine. And there have been uh, truckloads of of support and truckloads of uh, aid, of food and medicine and clothing and, and uh, various items been shipped in. Thank you so much for giving and thank you for praying. Don't stop. Keep it up. Keep giving. Thank you, pastors, for your giving and your prayers, for giving and sending the support to the work to our pastors and help in Ukraine. And I want to stop, just tell you one, one testimony. You may have heard about this. There was a, a lady from one of our churches that was trapped in a village with her children. Her husband had left and the Russian army came in and surrounded the city, took it over the village. It was a village. And this lady with her 12 children hid under the house as long as they could until finally they were out of food and water. There's nothing else they could do. And so she had to do something. And so she saw a stranger standing out in front of their house. And so not knowing what to do, she went out to the stranger. He was dressed in a in a military uh, uh, Russian, uh, Russian uh, uniform. And uh, th they were very, 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 very concerned and frightened, as you may have read in the newspapers and heard on the news. When the Russian troops were going through some of these villages, they would capture and take young children and women and tie them to their armored vehicles, their armored personnel carriers and their uh, tanks, tie them on the outside because the, the civilians... Of, uh, of Ukraine still had their guns. They didn't take them away from them. And so they were able to defend themselves against the onslaught of the enemy. And they were being very, very effective. And so the Russian uh, authorities, troops said, tie these people to the outside of your vehicles to help as human shields to protect our Russian troops. So they were very frightened. They didn't know what to do. Until they ran out of food and water, the mother saw this man standing out, this stranger out there. She went out and told him who she was. And she said, in my house, are my children, and we have to leave. We've run out of food and water. This man who was dressed in a Russian army uniform told her, he said, well, you cannot leave because there's mines all around here and landmines out through there to the, to the, to the road that you need, you can't, you can't leave. Bring your children and come out here. She went and got her children, not knowing what was gonna happen. He blindfolded them all and said, hold each other's hand and follow me. 
this man led them through the minefield, led them out of the city, out of the village, over to a road. He removed their blindfolds and he said, okay, there's the Ukrainian uh, checkpoint right there about, about 500 uh, or 1,000 meters down the road and you can go and you're safe. He said to her, I am not your enemy, I am your friend. He was a stranger, she didn't know who he was, but you know what, somebody said, don't forget to entertain strangers unaware. In so doing, they have entertained angels. I don't know what it was, but I have a feeling, I have a feeling that my God in heaven looked down and he said, you know what? There's a family in there. There's an apostolic people in there. They need a way out. I believe with all of my heart that my God dispatched a little angel and said, I want you to go to a down there and get my people out of that place. God is able. God is in control. My God knows how to deliver out of every situation. God bless you. It's great to be here. Hallelujah. Well, just stay standing. Ushers, if you will, come to the front at this time. I am happy to report to you that as of uh, 6.50 this evening, we have raised $523,911.83. Hallelujah. And I believe God wants to do more tonight. So I'm challenging you. If you're a pastor, why don't you get on board and let's help see God do great things around our world. Uh, it, it wouldn't be very difficult for us to, to keep on going in this offering. And I believe God's going to use it in a very special way. So let's pray right now. Lord, we come to you tonight with our offering. God, we ask tonight that you would touch us. Lord, help us. God, I pray for each and every person here tonight as they make that decision of what to give. Let them hear from you and give what you speak to their spirit. And always, God, we will give you praise, honor, and glory for what you're going to do with this offering. In Jesus' name we pray.
not them shall worship him not them in spirit and in truth there is only one spirit there is only one name there is only one god tonight I said are you thankful for the Holy Ghost tonight I wonder if I could challenge you right now to go back in your mind and in your spirit and remember the night that God baptized you with the Holy Ghost and the joy and the freedom and the liberty and the power that you felt when you came up out of that water and I wonder if you could, could begin to praise God like you did the night that God filled you with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Come on, right now, lift your voice. Lift your voice. Come on, give God praise.
to be in the house with people of the name right now. Are you happy to be in the house with people that have been buried in the name of Jesus? You know, let me tell you what you need to do. You need to take a good look at all the people around you. And when the devil tries to tell you you're all alone and there's no one else wanting to serve God, nobody else wants truth, you need to remember this night and remember all the people standing around you that have the Holy Ghost that's been baptized in Jesus' name. Oh, wish somebody would shout Jesus! Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just remain standing. After this service this evening, we have a special uh, banquet prepared for all the ministry over in building one, the great hall, the chapel, and we invite all of the ministry to come and join with us. We finish out this last night of Arkansas International Camp Meeting 2022, and I just want to say a great big thank you to all of our speakers this year. Could we show our appreciation? To all of the men, women that have done such a great job preaching. Hallelujah. What a word from God we heard today. Thank you, Brother Marks, for the message you preached today. Hallelujah. He does hearts also. Hallelujah. We've been so blessed. Since Friday night, it all started off. I just want to remind you that we've changed camp meeting. Camp meeting starts on Friday night. And it was an incredible move of the Holy Ghost. A great crowd here Friday night in our bilingual service. So I invite you next year, 2023, we're going to start on Friday night. It'll be bilingual service, then Saturday night, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Monday, Monday night, Tuesday, Tuesday night. I had someone say, why don't you change the time? And why don't you, why don't you put it in the middle of the week? Well, you know what? It's been like this for 70 plus years and I don't think it's bothered anybody to to make it happen because you're here tonight so we're going to just keep it the way it is you come when you can come we are so 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 grateful to all of you for being here especially the pastors we realize you have a choice where you go where your people go 
And we are humbled and honored that you would include Arkansas International Camp Meeting in your conference schedule during the summer. And, and it's just, a, it really is our honor for you to be here tonight. It is so good to have with us my friend, Brother Matthew Tuttle. I love and appreciate him so very much. Great man of God. And Brother Tuttle, I don't, I don't know if you heard, but today we changed you. You're no longer Tuttle's puddle, but you're the Tuttle shuttle. <laughs> no, in all seriousness, we want you to come tonight and obey the Holy Ghost. Preach what's on your heart. You know, I, I, I realize that this is the last night and we just want you to do what you feel led in the Holy Ghost. And we're going to be behind you. We're going to support the Word of God that's preached tonight. Hey, if you're going to support what you hear preached and you are ready to hear a word from God, why don't you clap your hands as Brother Tuttle comes to preach. Thank you, Pastor Holmes. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody else. Y'all all looking at me like it's up to you. But it's not. It's up to God. You know, 73 times in the Bible it says all the congregation. 23 of them were connected to something God would do if all the congregation got involved. Sometimes it's not the preacher or the praise team, it's all the congregation. The Passover was all the congregation. Come on. Sacrifice of worship was all the congregation. Come on, this ain't in my nose. All the people had to shout for the walls to come down. Wouldn't it be nice if it was just all the congregation tonight? I put the mic down and y'all just did it. But I can feel the pressure. Tonight it's on you. You want to be blessed? You can be blessed. You want to be free? You can be free. You want to be delivered? You can be delivered. You've heard preaching, 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 preaching. But it's on all the... Co That's why who you go to church with matters. That's why I can't sit next to some deadhead. Oh, I'll say it again. Where you sit in church matters. Who you sit next to in church matters. I don't need to be up next to somebody putting pressure on me to stay seated. Like I, come on, they got gorilla glue on their backside. Get me up. Get me out of my mess. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody shout Jesus. Jesus. It's pretty good if you believe he's the second in the Trinity. But I thought I was with one God, Jesus' name, tongue-talking, Holy Ghost, Alpha, Omega, beginning, ending, Lily of the Valley, the Rose of Sharon, the Father, the Son, the Spirit, all three in one. You ought to say Jesus. There you go. There you go. Colossians chapter 2 and verse 1. As you're turning there this evening, I honor the Holmes family, Pastor Holmes, Sister Holmes, and the high honor that I have to call them my friends, this great church that I love so dearly and has made such an impact on my life, my family, and my ministry. I honor you. You guys are the best. It's, it's always so encouraging, inspiring uh, to come across the interstate and look and say, that's an apostolic Pentecost. I love traveling around the country saying, you know, the biggest oneness Pentecostal church in America is a tongue-talking apostolic church, not a club, church. I love that. I, don't y'all change anything. It seems to be working quite, quite nicely. <laughs> and I honor my family. My son, Lewis, is here. Mikhail and Savannah are here. And I honor them. My father-in-law, Brother McCoy. Of course, my father, uh, I, I love him so much. And my goodness... When your youth choir singing the Star Spangled Banner has me getting the Holy Ghost. 
My God, I didn't, I'm like shouting to the Star Spangled Banner, you know, it's like my, like shouting with my hand on my heart, you know, like, <laughs> it was awesome. I'm kind of caught between my assignment and your expectation tonight. Uh, I feel like the Lord's given me something and I know y'all, what y'all expect, but I'm going to preach what the Lord's given to me. Colossians 2 and 1, if you're there, say amen. amen. For I would that ye knew what great conflict I have for you and for them at Laodicea and for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh. For a few minutes, I want to title, or several minutes, I want to title uh, my remarks, Unseen Faces, Unseen Faces. Father, I thank you for you are mighty, you are wonderful. I thank you for your presence that is already in this building. With lifted hands, you have been in this place of we've surrendered our lives. Now, once again, I commit to you my life, the coming moments, and all that you will do through me in this building. I'm dependent, Lord, upon your hand, your anointing, your spirit. I pray, Lord, now that you would bring to memory that which you've given into my spirit and study. I pray, God, that, Lord, as we leave this house, we would leave changed, that we would leave transformed, encouraged. God, reminded of your love for us and the great challenge that lies before us in these most perilous times, I will always give you praise in the matchless name. And everybody said, Jesus. You can be seated in the wonderful name of Jesus. On a cool September day in 1982, a plane lifted from Portland, Oregon's International Airport with final destination through Boston. It would stop Frankfurt, Germany. My parents were going to be aim, aim worker missionaries in the country of Germany. At the airport that day, to say goodbye were two sets of grandparents, uncles, aunts, and many, many friends. I was my grandparents' first and only grandchild. My mother was the only daughter and sister, and I was the first nephew. My father, uh, he was here tonight, and I'm, I'm going to talk to tell you a little bit about me. We've been doing this now 15 years, this camp meeting together. It's pretty awesome. I love you guys. Thanks for letting me do it, by the way. My father had been selling real estate and was the number two listing agent in Portland, Oregon at the time. Previous year, they had completed construction of my mother's custom dream home. My dad was the assistant pastor at a growing revival church with a thriving youth ministry and a Christian school. For my parents' life was financially, ministerially, and it was family good. But my dad was con conflicted. There was an inner fight within him. As they took off, my mother, she was fearful of flying and still is. She sat in her seat with a 17-month-old little Matthew Tuttle, seven months pregnant with my sister. In 82, she wondered what it would be like to give birth to her daughter in another country where the doctors would not speak her language and the medicine may not be quite as modern. What would it be like to not have her mother, her brothers and sister-in-laws there to celebrate and help with her children? But the fear of flying and leaving all that she knew and loved was overshadowed by a conflict, a conflict inside of her. It was something that neither of them could escape. As they closed their eyes, it was not faces familiar, but these faces unseen that they did not know, eyes that were hollow, names they could not pronounce, a language they did not yet speak. It kept them awake at night, they tell me. They both knew deep down inside, I must go. I got a couple pictures, Dad. We made it on the big screen. I'm gaining some weight. I'm glad they got the wide angle up here. That's my mom and dad. Y'all can give them a hand. So my dad turned in his real estate uh, resignation to the real estate company. And, and they had told him, they said, you're crazy, Mike. And how are you going to pay for this conflict? Where will the money come from? 
How do I raise children on another continent? Will my children grow up not knowing their family and resenting the decision I'm making? Will my wife resent me for taking her away from her family? These are the questions the conflicted are faced with, questions that dad only had one answer for. God will provide. Few people knew Mike and Diana Tuttle, for they were not Pentecost elite. My dad's father was a diesel mechanic and a potato farmer. His mother had passed when he was a teenager. My mother's parents were not wealthy. Her father was illiterate and able to read or write. My grandmother, to make a living, would bake cakes, and she taught at the Christian school. And so my parents sold their custom home and gave every piece of my mother's furniture away. And again, there they stood 40 years ago, seven months pregnant, holding a 17-month-old child with no long-term plan, no monthly support, no internet, no cell phone, no air miles, no wealthy family, and no guarantees. Just a one-way ticket, conflicted for unseen faces. Over 50 people that day stood there with tears streaming down their faces. Hugs were repeated multiple times and held long. The final boarding call was made. In those days, you could go all the way down to the jet bridge. My dad walked his little family down that jetway onto that plane. They took off. Hours later, they would land in Germany. My mother said she wanted to call home and someone had given her an MCI calling card. So she called. As she was talking, after one minute, she would hear this click, signifying she was being charged. It cost $5 a minute. Four minutes later, the call was over. We made it. I love you. Tell Matthew we love him. Growing up on the mission field, I would call my grandmother and grandfather on Christmas and on our birthdays. For there was no FaceTime or Facebook, there was no Twitter, text, or emails, and a letter would take two to four weeks. Flying home was $2,500 to $3,000, so we didn't come back for camp meeting and Christmas and for vacation. It was every four to five years that we came back. You wonderful people would send care packages, of uh, Kool-Aid packages, those were wonderful. Bubble gum, and it would go through all the different climates of a ship, and by the time it got there, the tin foil or whatever that foil, you know, on the bubble gum is literally glued to the gum. I chewed it anyway. It was from America. My home, sweet home. Kraft mac and cheese. Didn't have it. I remember when cornflakes first came to the store, it was a great day of jubilation and wonder. Up until then, my mother had made cereal homemade at home with oats. I remember when the first McDonald's opened in our country. It was 30 minutes away, and we would drive there uh, for very special occasions. And then I remember the glorious day that I came back to America. I was 10 or 11 years old, and my first memories of America, I remember, you guys don't know this, but I, you, you don't remember the first time you taste root beer, but I do. It was amazing. Then I found this thing called Dr. Pepper. And then I found the dew that flows from the Mount of Hermon known as Mountain Dew. Whew. We had landed in this lay on this layover on the way back to Portland. And on the layover, there was a court called a food court, an entire area given to wonders of the American cuisine filled with fat. I ordered a, I don't even remember what I ordered. I was just a kid. All I remember is I got a cup that was the size of, of this pulpit thing. Well, it was bigger than this. This is tiny. You remember the old pu pulpit we used to have up here? It was one of those cups. You held it like this. And it was empty. And I remember looking at my dad saying, it's empty. And he pointed over to this land that flows. He said, you can fill it up. I said, really? Yeah. Went over. <laughs> stood right there and drank the whole thing. <laughs> wow. He said, you can fill it up again. I said, again? 
He said, you can fill it up as many times as you want to. I said, why did we leave this glorious land? <laughs> Ice machines, Fruit Loops. I remember first time I tasted them. Captain Crunch, Wendy's, Dairy Queen, Burger King. Eating out in restaurants just to get full instead of a special occasion. Paying in dollars and air conditioning in your car. Air conditioning in your house. And this feeling, America has a feeling. It's called freedom and it's wonderful. It's wonderful. The size of the grocery carts and the smell of America. And then I remember going to church. It wasn't four or five anymore. <laughs> they had entire camps dedicated to youth, called youth camps, kids camps, camp meetings, conferences just for the fun of it. I did not enjoy being a missionary's kid. I'm honest. Y'all know I'm honest. I hated it. I wanted to live in America. And so every time, two years later after deputation, when we were headed home, I'd cry. I don't want to go back to Holland, where our church is small and the weather's cold. I don't want to go back to the peer pressure that's heavy. I, I grew up in public school there, and my teacher would take me as a kindergarten, first grader, into a gym. They would take all of us, have us take our clothes off, and we would lay on a mat and imitate an animal, and the animal we imitated best was the one that we probably were before we were a human. That's what I was told. I was in middle school, they would, after gym class, they would take us into a room, and it was filled with spigots, guys, girls, everybody. You were to strip down, that's where we showered. I told my dad, <laughs> it didn't go over very well. Dad went down to that school, and he took a stand. How did you do it, Matt? How did you live for God in that time and in that place? Uh, I'll tell you how I made it. I had a father and a mother that covered me. I'll say it again, I had a dad that spoke up when wrong was wrong. He took, in Amsterdam, in Amsterdam, with, come on, no Bill of Rights, no Constitution, no, no, no help in the most liberal country. Come on, my, my, it's been, we want to blame Hollywood, we want to blame uh, Biden or Trump or Pelosi or, or whatever. But let me just tell you, the problem with America is silent fathers. <laughs> Evil has always been present. I said evil has always been present. They would, when I grew up, the gay transgender thing we're going through right now, I grew up in it. They would, they would have sexual relationships on Pride Month going down the canals, out on the barge, having sex, gay people. I, I grew up with my parents look the other way and, and taking a stand for that. You could go, you'd walk down the street and you could buy a woman, a man, a mix, whatever, from the, from the windows and, and have relationships with them. It was, a, it was a horrible place, but I'm thankful I had a, a, a dad. I had a mom. I, I made it. Didn't have a Christian school. Didn't have a youth group. Didn't have a youth camp. Didn't have a camp meeting. Didn't have a conference. All I had was a dad. All I had was a mom. And that's the problem with America is daddies are being quiet. And if you come on, if there's one thing you need to get, it's that we need men of God to rise up and no longer capitulate to the pressure of our society, but declare I'm standing Sin has been present always. It was there. Eve, Eve. The reason we have sin is, is not because of Eve. It's because of Adam. Adam deflected his responsibilities. I know we want to blame Eve, but, but it's not her fault. God told Adam, he said, name everything. He brought it to him to see what he would call it. And he called it a dog. It was a dog. A lion was a lion. A bear, a bear, even down to an ant. However, in his process of naming things, he did not name Eve. I said he didn't name Eve. Your name is your purpose. 
He gave the lion a name. He gave it a purpose, but to his family, he never spoke purpose over her. And because of no purpose, uh, she started talking uh, and fulfilling a purpose uh, that was never intended for her. Let me tell you something, dads. Uh, your home and your family needs your voice. And because he did not name her, there was curses. Genesis 3 and 16. Unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In thy sorrow thou shalt bring forth children. And thy desire shall be toward thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. And unto Adam, he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast not eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake, and sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns and thistles shall it the field bring forth uh, to thee. Uh, and he keeps on going, and he curses the, the woman, the ground, and, and the serpent. I'm going quickly. Uh, and right in the middle of all of the cursing, uh, all of a sudden, Adam interrupts God. And he says, and Adam called his wife Eve in the middle of the cursing. Uh, Adam, he said, oh my God, I've done, I've, I've named everything. I've given everything a name. I spoke down to the little ant, uh, but I forgot to call you Eve. You're Eve, the mother of all things uh, that are alive. Oh God, I named everything but my family. And when he named Eve, you know the next thing God did? After he named Eve, the Bible says that then God doesn't curse anymore. I said, when the man spoke up over his family, God stopped cursing and God start, started covering. He then made a covering for them because the man stood up. And when the man stands up, there's a covering from God that comes over your family. Go ahead and sit there, Dad. Go ahead and then be silent and let pornography come into your home. Go ahead and be silent and let them watch whatever they want. Go ahead and be silent and, and you'll find there'll be a purpose, but it will be one filled with curses. So open up your mouth. Open up your mouth and be the man of God. You can't, Come on, stop blaming Hollywood. That's a cop out. Stop blaming a politician. That's a cop out. Start being what God has called you to be. Come on, cover them. Cover them, Dad. I've got to cover my family. I've got to speak life over my family. If I'm a dad not leading my family, I'm part of the problem. I'll say it again. If school extracurricular garbage is more important than prayer, I'm the problem. If I shout when little Johnny hits a little ball off of a stupid pole, but I sit on the back row like a deadhead, don't make it to church half the time, I'm part of the crime problem. If I act like this at his ball games, which he shouldn't even be in anyway, and I can't even make it to prayer meeting, or I sit on a pew like this, I am part of the problem. I said you're part of the problem, Daddy. I see you screaming at a ball game. I see you screaming at... But then I see the same men come in and I can't get them to prayer meeting. And if you do show up... It's not what you were doing at the ball game. You weren't doing this at the ball game. You were doing this at the ball game. And little Johnny is looking at you and he's saying, okay, okay, maybe my purpose is football. Maybe my purpose, and he tries to find it in idolatry. And then we wonder why our children are being mutilated, why our children are being abused. It's, it's because daddies that don't dance anymore. It's because of fathers that don't shout anymore. It's because of men that don't pray out loud anymore. And I say, rise up, old man of God. I'm all, I was just going to touch this, but I'm going to stay right here. I feel it. Rise up, man of God. Hold on. On the count of three, I want every man of God to lay your hand on your belly. Put your hand on your belly if you are a man. I should not have to define that. Ladies, be quiet. One, you're gonna shout. You're gonna shout for your family. You're gonna lift your voice and you're gonna let this transgender 
This is an abuse. This is a spirit of child abuse. I said it's child abuse and mutilation of their bodies. It's sin. It's perverse. And we have the power to stop it. I shouldn't be having to do that. Why am I having to do this? One, two, Jesus is what we're going to say. One, two, three, Jesus. Jesus, I rebuke the spirit of homosexuality. I rebuke the spirit that causes gender what they say dysphoria. I rebuke you every lie. I believe my own truth. There is no own truth. There's only one truth. I said there's one truth. You can have your belief about it, but there's only one truth. There's one God. There's male and female. There's a father that sticks closer than a brother. Come on, there's a father for your children. But if you're a man, it's time you get in these altars. I'm tired of watching women outdance our men. I said it's not it's it's not God's will. Well, I'm just trying to I don't want to overshelter them. You pervert. Thank God Moses' parents weren't like you. Put him in a little, come on, put him in a little basket. Oh, I don't know why he's trying to, he's trying to hurt me. Trying to, he's not trying to hurt you. He's trying to hide you. You don't want to shelter them. Guess where they end up? In the mouths of an alligator. In the mouths of some pedophile. I don't need a pedophile educating my children. Come on, if your church has a Christian school, it really is where they should be. Come on. I don't need some drag queen reading a story to my kid. I don't, it ain't gonna happen. It ain't gonna happen. Why would you let a drag queen teach your children when they can come into the house of the King of Kings and have him impart glory and power into their lives? This is who we are. You got to, I'm going to get back to daddy's story, but Bible says in Genesis 22 and 9, this is Abraham, he's coming. Bible says, and they, they came to a place which God had told him of, and Abraham built an altar there. Look at your neighbor and say, Abraham built an altar. Bring my rocks. Say it again. Say, Abraham built an altar. If Abraham built the altar, we know who didn't build the altar. I'll say it again. If Abraham built the altar, and the Bible tells us specifically who built the altar, and who was it again? Dad. That means the boy didn't build the altar. Okay, little Johnny, you go ahead and go on up to the front and shout. You go ahead and go pray. You go ahead and go worship. Yeah, Johnny, you get in the youth choir. Well, Dad, are you going to sing in the adult choir? No, Daddy's a little tired for that. Oh. Where's my rocks? Build an altar. Come here, young lady. Can you, can you help me? Are you, are you brave? Come on. Pull her up here. What's your name, beautiful girl? Hadassah. Hadassah. All right. Beautiful name. Let's go. All right, sweetie. All right. We got to build an altar. That means we got to stack these rocks on top of each other. Go ahead. Go ahead and try. I need you to try. Try. Just fake it. Try. Try. Come on, just try harder. Worship harder. Pray more. You're not doing enough. No, she can't. She can't build that altar. She can't lift rocks that heavy. I said if an altar's gonna be built in your home, it's not gonna be Johnny. It's not gonna be a 
Hadassah. It's not going to be little Susie. It's going to be daddy that does the heavy lift. Oh, I wish I had a daddy that would start doing the heavy lifting in your home instead of mama calling prayer meeting. It ought to be daddy. Instead of mama being the one that's pushing all the time for spiritual stuff, you got to get convicted tonight and say, I'm going to be the man. I'm going to rise up and take my world. Come on, daddy. I need you out in the house shouting just a little bit. I need you to start worshiping a little bit. I see some dads. Now I'm going to call you out. There's a man there not shouting. Shout. Jump, 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 jump. I need you leaping, daddy. Come on. Your boy needs to see you build the altar. He can't lift the family altar. Dad builds it. Abraham. If you leave family devotion up to mom, no matter how spiritual she is, it doesn't happen. He built the altar and tied his son to it. Said he was tied to it. That means he didn't have a choice. Daddy, am I going to go to the altar? (laughs) Are you going to go to the altar, Bubba? You tied to it. Let me tell you what's indicative of your family. Let me tell you, here's a little measuring stick. If you know your family's in trouble, if your children ask you whether or not you're going to go to the altar, if your children wonder whether or not you're going to worship, you have major problems in your house. If your little son or daughter has ever asked you, Dad, are we going to prayer meeting? You've got problems in your home. Are we going to pay our tithes? Are we going to be faithful? Are we going to set up chairs? Are we going to... No, 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 son. You don't choose. We set up chairs. We pray at the altar. We leap when he says leap. We pass out flyers. We do the fast. If it's 52 days, 52 days. It's because it's what we do. We're tied to the altar. I was tied to the altar. Rise up, man of God. Rise up. I rebuke the spirit that's coming and going against the masculinity. The man, come on, there's a spirit loose against you, Father. Raise your hand right now. Every man of God, I know I, you're, uh, come on, I could shy raise it as high as you can. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I rebuke the spirit of effeminacy. I rebuke the spirit of confusion. I say it again in the name of Jesus. I rebuke you, spirit of confusion that is trying to take captive the men of this church, the men of America. And I release a boldness into the heart, the mind of every man, a confidence in who he is to rise up and lead his home into the rapture. Claim it by putting your hands together as loud as you can and blessing the name that is above every name, the name of Jesus. Do it furiously. Do it with vigor. Do it with passion. I praise you, O Father. I lift you up, O high God. I worship you. And so I would beg my father, take me back to America. Take me back to America. I remember one time my daddy set me down. I'm going to tell you the Holy Ghost is talking to the church. This camp meeting, there's something special about this camp meeting. We've always preached. I, I, love, this, I love this meeting, Nathan, Pastor Holmes, because I'm going to tell you why. Every time I come, there's a certain sound. It seems like this year there has been a reiteration of holiness preached. It's always preached, but it feels like this year, am I right? It's like every message has been re- reaffirming it oh, harder perhaps than I have in years heard it preached. I mean, not that, I don't mean that negatively because like Brother Holmes said, we're led by the Spirit and the Spirit is saying to the church, man of God, it's time to stand up and not capitulate. There, there's, we are in trying times. And as goes that pulpit, so goes our nation. I said, as goes that pulpit, so goes our country. 
I'll say it again. Politicians don't determine the course of the nation. Preachers determine the course of the nation. The White House, uh, come on, and the lectern in Capitol Hill do not determine the direction of the nation. This lectern determines it, and your response to it, uh, we're gotta, we've got to, we've got to rise up. Uh, we've got to declare it. Uh, I remember sitting on the, the bed and, 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 and I said, Dad, I was crying. I was, I guess I was a horrible missionary's kid. And Dad, he said, I remember tears streaming out his face. Matthew, if we go back, who's going to tell these people about Jesus? I said, I don't care. I want Mountain Dew. I didn't understand it then. But I understand it now. We're not going back. He said, you're strapped to this. It was this conflict. Why? Why, Mike Tuttle? Why put your family and your finances and your future through this? He said, I'm conflicted for unseen faces. I can't sleep at night. I would hear my dad pray. My dad prayed at night. Mom prayed in the morning. And they would, I could hear it it as if they were praying haunted by by lost souls. Why are you doing this? Colossians 2 and 2. Paul said that their hearts might be comforted. He said, I was in conflict so that you could be comfortable. Let me just tell you tonight the reason we're comfortable. Let me tell you why that pew feels so good and the air condition is so nice. Uh, it's not because we're so grand. Uh, it's because someone before us uh, was conflicted. Uh, somebody drove a school bus and picked somebody up. Uh, somebody went past your house and taught you a Bible study. Somebody, come on, uh, came in and set up the chairs and taught your family. Uh, somebody got conflicted so that I could be comfortable oh God oh God why we got to raise 400,000 for missions because he's conflicted because Bishop's not happy just come on with a few thousand and a nice feeling there's people lost dying and going to hell we've got to have a building fund why because we've got to have a bigger building we've got to come on we got to keep giving we got to keep pushing we got to keep being because we're conflicted we're conflicted it's what keeps your pastor awake at night it's what tosses it turns I said he's turning over the lost in his city pray to God he doesn't have to turn over you every minute come on thank God he turns when I'm in trouble but when he's turning for me that means there's prayers not going up for somebody lost instead of you putting a burden on him why don't you start lifting him up and say you don't have to worry about me preacher I'll help you carry the load I'll help you win a soul I'll help you have revival hey I have move-ins coming to my church. How long you been in church? Moving in from out of state. Uh, well, I've been in church my whole life. We're sixth generation Pentecost. I said, good, you're not a baby and I ain't gonna treat you like one. Well, I can't believe he didn't pray for me in the altar and I have an ingrown toenail. Listen to me. Let me tell you how, let me tell you how your pastor looks at an altar call. You're over here and you got cancer. Filled with the Holy Ghost, baptized in Jesus' name. Sinners over here going to hell. He's going to go here. It's not because he doesn't love you. It's because he knows you're saved and they're lost. And that, that should not offend you. If that offends you, go find a little petty preacher somewhere that'll text you a, a, a daily Bible verse. We're not here for that. We're here that all may be saved. That all may be saved. That all... Congregation ought to get in on it. Everybody ought to shout amen. Preacher, let's win the world. Preacher, let's have revival. I 
I know we have great meetings and music and ministry, but if we meet and don't reach, we've lost the mission. This room is great, but we're not just here to spit out the theological re re revelations that blow our minds about, you know, a new spin on, a, on an old truth. Ooh, I never thought of it that way. There's people out there that have never even thought about it at all. So when the, come on. So on Sunday morning, when the house has got a sinner in it, and your preacher gets up and says, turn to John 3 and 5, don't you say, oh God, I've heard this again. You get up and say, that's the best message you could ever preach. Preach Acts 2.38, preacher. Preach John 2. Do the whole John 3, 1 through 8 and 316. Give them Acts 10 and 19. Throw in 21 and 412. Give them a little Matthew 28 and 19 and Isaiah 28 11. Don't forget Joel 2 and 228. Preach that. Preach the gospel of his death, burial, and resurrection. Preach it, preacher. I know what you're doing. I know what we're doing. We're conflicted for the lost. Good church means somebody got saved. does not mean you got 16 goosebumps up. Good church means somebody that was going to hell is now going to heaven. That's good church. I don't like the song. You're saved. We're singing for a sinner. They traveled. It's the last night. Koro Masandayama. Who, man, we had good church. Anybody get saved? Come on, somebody. We got to get sinners in this house. We gotta, people got to get the Holy Ghost. People got to get baptized in Jesus' name. Oh, God. Oh, God. That's what we did. So we traveled. My, my parents have been, to, have been in church in every state in America, all of them. All over. And then we'd go back after we'd raised some money. And they'd start churches. We didn't have three months. We didn't have launch services or money to give away bikes and iPads and, and all that jazz. Just rented a community center. She's for Christ gave dad some money to buy a family car. All our missionary friends and neighbors had either a Volkswagen Passat or a Volvo or something. So my dad went out and bought a bright red church van. I hated it even more. My coolness factor as a teenager was at a negative. My mom thought that everything was cured. And the, the key to revival was a prayer walk. Dad believed that it was passing out tracks. So every weekend he'd set goals. 5,000 flyers this weekend, family. And mom would say, all right, 50 streets prayed. And we'd pass out flyers and walk the streets. That's him. I don't know if that, that guy, that's one of millions of flyers my dad had. I don't know the guy. He didn't come to church. I don't think he got saved. Uh, he didn't make it. Dad might not have made a big difference in that life. But there was a little boy named Matthew Tuttle, about 13 years old. He was watching that man. Uh, he was watching him. Uh, and he might have been. Oh, why did you do it? I did it for him. I did it for them. I did it for them. I was conflicted for them. We'd have church on the sidewalks. Like that right there. We didn't, we, we didn't win a lot of people. I mean, sometimes they'd come and they'd tear up our, our flyers and 
They'd spit on us, spit at us. They'd rip them up, they'd burn them. That's my, my dad playing the clarinet. Y'all didn't know he was a clarinet player. And there's a lady right there playing the accordion. They weren't good at it. It sounded like a hog being slaughtered with a plastic butcher knife. <laughs> and someone told mama, mama said, so mom or dad, one of them said, it, it ain't working, all these flyers, it ain't working. And mom said, but it sure does tick the devil off. If it ticks the devil off, it's working. Why are you up there dancing? It ticks the devil off. Look, I can feel it in the atmosphere. You're tired. You've shouted all week. But you ought to just dance to tick the devil off. You ought to shout just because it makes him mad. I said, you ought to just get up, raise your weary hands. Say, I shouted 16 hours last night. But I'm going to do this one just to tick hell off. I already got my blessing. But I'm going to bless the Lord just to make hell mad. somebody I don't feel like shouting hey the devil might mess with you a little less if you stop complaining about him and started making him complain about you oh the devil did this to me oh the devil did this to me I don't walk around town talking about how the devil did this and the devil did that y'all are some of the devil's greatest fans he's your greatest fan oh the devil did this and that you know I never say that you know what hell goes around saying? Matt Tuttle did this and Matt Tuttle did that. Matt Tuttle's up to preach again. Matt's got his shouting shoes on. My God. You be, ooh, there's that Florida crazy guy. They hate him. He makes them complain. Hey, it's the last night. Somebody ought to just make hell complain about you. Stop giving hell glory. Stop talking about how bad the devil is. The devil's good at being bad. That's what he does. We've got a great God. We've got a mighty God. Somebody shout Jesus just to tick the devil off. Shout Jesus. Do it one more time. Shout Jesus. Hold on. I need you to take both your hands. And I need you to put the devil's face right about chest level. Got the devil's face chest level? Now take both those hands and clap them like you're smacking down. There it is. He hates it. Yeah. That's what you do when hell comes on. This is what you do when the devil comes in. He'll mess with you less if you slap him around. He'll mess with you less if you leap on his head. He'll mess with you less if you'll shout. Dad did it all. He volunteered at Corey Ten Boom House. The Corey Ten Boom story, he, my dad was a tour guide there. Just went there, didn't, he didn't get money, he just went to win a soul, and he did. He won a Dutch lawyer, one of our first converts. Then he, they went to language school. They went to language school while they were learning Dutch. They were winning souls. We won several. Yeshua work from Ethiopia stayed, Kayon Davis stayed. She ended up teaching me in Sunday school later years. And we started having church. That was in the south of the country. Then we started having church in the north in a, in a little, this is it. This is just my story. Uh, thank you for indulging me. I have a picture in a Bible study. This was our church in this little house. Old lady let us have church in her house. And guess what? In that house, while dad would teach, but people would be filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> then we grew a little bit and had maybe 10 people. We couldn't fit in that living room. And then we rented a community center and my dad left a beautiful pulpit and a beautiful sanctuary for a building and a pulpit. I should have given you the picture of the slide of our family singing. You see me, good looking guy there at the bottom up here I am. Yeah, you see, you see, you see, 
Matt Tuttle at camp meeting. That's how Matt Tuttle got to camp meeting. A table with a briefcase and a Bible singing with my family and we did it every Sunday. I don't, you think, you think your 12 year old kid wants to stand up there and sing and it might like, look like a, I can't say it. No, but I was tied to it. We didn't have fancy stuff. We didn't have even a little screen for the homes, much less. My God, this is amazing. We didn't have that. Like I said, Dad played the clarinet. Anybody ever seen a clarinet played in church? There, your hands went down mighty quick. <laughs> I mean, how do you play I, I Got a Praise? <laughs> And he's up there. My daddy would be playing this clarinet because that's all he could play. You know, mom's over there going, and I'm sitting on my pew going, but he would go like this. And that horn would go from to and that meant you better get up and shout with my clarinet. Some of you look at me funny. You call me the shuttle and radical and spinner and all that jazz. You know why? I did it with a clarinet. God Almighty, guess what? I, Daddy, get up here. Get on up here, Daddy. Daddy, look at this. We went from the clarinet and no screen to look at all these screens. Look at all this. jump dad that's the sign jump I'm getting even that's not good enough higher higher come on <laughs> you know what some of you spoiled rotten Pentecostals need is a man with a clarinet to blow his horn and just kind of go like this get you up off and get conflicted for something in your spirit start shouting a little bit start dancing there's people in heaven that did it without no talent not a lot of talent not a lot of money not a lot of fame but buddy it was powerful I can't remember what stories I tell anymore. I've been here so long. I remember one time, mom, we won this lady. She was from America. And uh, she was there. She was a high-class prostitute. Dad put an ad in the paper. If being born once hasn't given you satisfaction, try being born again. She saw it. She came to church. God filled her with the Holy Ghost. She was living together with her boyfriend named Jerry. Jerry wouldn't come to church because he was a barkeeper and barkeep. And he would tell my mother, I, I would come to church, but... I have to keep bar on Sunday. My mom said, come to church or I'm going to shut your bar down. He said, don't shut the bar down. I own the bar. She said, you can shut it down just for a couple hours and come to church. He said, I ain't going to do it. She said, I'm going to shut it down. He said, he laughed. Where are we going to go prayer walk, mom? We're going down there at the Josefelt, around that bar, okay, Kleina, whatever it was. Kleina Heitcher, Kleina Bichitcher. Yeah, little pig. And we went around it. And we'd say, in the name of Jesus, shut this bar down in the name of Jesus. And while we're doing it, dad's passing out flyers. You know, he's lighting out flyers. Mom's going, in the name of Jesus, shut the bar down. It took about a month. A month later, there was boards up on that wall. Oh, yes, there were. And the bar was shut down. And we did it with a clarinet and an accordion. Drug addicts, homosexuals, prostitutes, they came in. My dad bought an old house. It was built in 1893. It was in horrible shape. Three levels high. He turned the third level into a drug rehabilitation. He would go in there for weeks at a time. and go one week with somebody and detox them, pray and fast with them. That's how I got my don't do drugs story. Dad just took me on one of those detox weeks. People puking up black junk. You never want to do drugs. I never did. It's horrible. 
He opened up a refugee ministry, found out there's people coming in on a boat that needed Jesus. So we'd drive that red van back and forth on Sunday morning, pick up refugees. We lived in the north and our first service was in the south. Started at 10 o'clock in Dordrecht and it was an hour and a half drive. We had to pick up the refugees and other people for church. So we left 6.30 in the morning on Sunday. We'd drive an hour and a half, pick up the refugees. We'd then take them to church. We'd have church. Then we'd take them back and we'd stop by the Hague to have our second service at 2 p.m. where we rented a community center and we set it all up and we'd have church. And then we'd tear it all down. Then we'd drive to Amsterdam back in the north where we'd rent another community center and we'd say, I would set up the chairs. I need a little glory. My God. I don't know why that preacher, Brother Tuttle, isn't setting up chairs. Baby, I've set up more chairs than you could ever set up in your whole entire life in Amsterdam. In no air conditioning. It was horrible. Set them up. And we'd get home at 9, 10 o'clock at night. We'd leave at 6, uh, get home at 10. And I was tired, tired, tired. I didn't want to go, but I was tied to it. Guess what? I passed math class I made it through history. I got through high school. Your kids will be okay. Get them to church. Well, Johnny's got school tomorrow. Get him to church. Well, Johnny might get a B. Okay. So he gets a B in history. Just make sure he gets an A in heaven. Dad said, I'm fine with him getting to be in history, but he's going to have an A plus in Holy Ghost. He's going to have an A plus in dancing in the spirit. And it turned out all right. I'm here. Come on, baby. You might not be the best speller. You might not even win the spelling bee, but you're going to win the shout dance. You're going to win the running of the aisles. You're going to have a mansion up in glory. Your kids are going to be okay. My dad, not once in my life, took me hunting or fishing. We went a couple times because a preacher took us for free. But he didn't take me. He never took me fishing for fish. I say he never took me fishing for fish. I'm not good with all this. And lots of tangled up stuff. But if you give me exploring God's word in my left hand and a Bible in this hand, <laughs> he couldn't speak Dutch, so I, would, I could, so I would go with him every night. And that's how I learned people and I learned the Bible. He didn't build, he, Dad never dug me a bass pond to fish out of, but he did, he did dig me a pond in that old house took out the kitchen and knocked out the wall between the living room and the dining room. And that was the sanctuary and the kitchen was where he dug my pond. I got a picture of it with Martha. It was a hole in the ground. See that hole in the ground? That was my pond. He tiled it and we'd fill it up with water. We didn't catch fish. But we caught Eric Vinkelar and we caught Martha. We caught Martha. Where's Eric? That guy right there, we caught him. You know who he is? That's the, that's the vice president of the United Pentecostal Church uh, International of the Netherlands. He's been here to camp meeting. Uh, he's a pastor and a preacher. You know why he's there? Because my dad got conflicted. You know why he's going to go to heaven? You know why that man right there is going to go to heaven, Yachts? It's because dad got conflicted. He'd have went to hell if dad wouldn't have went to Holland, but I'm thankful. I might not learn how to catch a bass, but I learned how to catch a soul. Thank you, Jesus. We caught him. We caught DJ. Come on, DJ. That, that man right there is now a missionary in the Congo. He pastors, to, I don't know, lots and lots of churches. You know why he's there? Because somebody got conflicted. Oh, my God, baptized. I, I just said, uh, Haleo, hundreds of people. The refugee ministry worked out. We got Haleo baptized, and he's a pastor now, and, and it was incredible. It was amazing. It was wonderful. And it works. I'm almost done. I don't have a fancy ending. 
He said, I'm, I was conflicted so that you could be comforted. Now my dad's the bishop. When I took the church, when I took, it was the third or fourth church dad started. I took it when I was 28 years old. And uh, he came back to the United States to lead Europe, Middle East. He was the bishop. My dad will get social security for retirement. You know, the bishop of my, that I sat under, he didn't take money. Average income of the Dutch of the members of my church on a monthly basis was 900 euro. It's about thousand dollars a month if I got in a bind dad would send me the money every month he'll send money over there to that church I'm thankful I've got a dad like that dad I'm thankful Paul said I was conflicted so that you could be comforted but then he said but beware verse 8 beware Lest any man spoil you. Jesus. I'm worried. I'm thankful it's comfortable. I'm thankful for the beauty of Pentecost and everything that it's acquired, but I've come to warn us. Let us not get so spoiled by the rudiments, by the teachings, by the ideas of our world that we forget that what got us here was not luxury cars and first class seats. Hey evangelist, stop complaining because you didn't get upgraded to the first class seat. You get to preach the gospel. Stop complaining because your hotel room smells bad. They threw them in prison. They beat their backs. They hung them upside down. They were conflicted. I'm thankful we're blessed, but I don't want to get so spoiled that I'm comfortable enough to go to heaven with just me. It's beautiful. It's beautiful, Bishop. It's beautiful, Pastor Nathan. There's just one problem. It's not big enough. And I know you're tired, man. I know you're tired. And I can see it in his eyes. And we go over there and look at that. Was it 100 acres we got over there? 100 acres. We did the first service in a tent. It was awesome. It's going to take a lot of work. But we've got to build that next building. We've got to build it to seat 10,000. We've got to build it. Come on, somebody. Oh, pastor, isn't this big enough? My God, it's grand. It's the biggest thing in Pentecost. We can sit back and be comfortable. No! Never! 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 Never get comfortable. Never get to the place where you're not praying and fasting and pushing. Never get to the place where you're not worshiping. Never get to the place. Build it bigger, Little Rock. Build it bigger, California. Build it bigger, Texas. Build it bigger, America. Have revival. Where's Germany? Come on here, Juan. He said, I'm afraid. He said that you've been spoiled. He said, but I was conflicted. He said, so you could be comforted. Verse 10, and now you're complete in him. If we will allow God to conflict us so that others can be comforted by this great truth and we will remain conflicted in prayer, God will complete the work that he has promised us. Throw the picture up there. I showed you that little house. Come on, that's one of the churches we have now. It's filled with hundreds of people worshiping God, magnifying God's. You know what they told dad when he went to Europe? 
And they told me the same thing when I went to Southeast Texas. Bishop White, I love my neighbor. He's here. And uh, it's pretty cool when you got Doug White as a neighbor and David Jennings, ain't it? I'm the luckiest guy in the world. They say our field's burnt. And that's what they told my dad. Europe's a burnt field. You're wasting your time, energy, and effort. And dad said, if it's a burnt field, that means there's ashes. I need a pastor. I need a pastor that the devil, because whoever told you that was of the devil, told you the field was burnt. Raise your hand. Come on, there's, they're going up across here. You, that we can't have revival. The devil has tried to tell you you can't have revival. He's a liar. Come on, Juan. Come on up here. I'm done. You're on. Stand right up here. And the Lord said, Exodus 9 and 8. God uses the ashes. Look at your neighbor and say, he gives you beauty. For what? Find yourself an ash pile. And the Lord said unto Moses and unto Aaron, take ye handfuls of ashes out of the furnace and let Moses sprinkle it towards heaven in the sight of Pharaoh and it shall become small dust in the land of Egypt and shall be boils breaking forth with blains upon man and upon beast throughout all the land of Egypt and they took ashes out of the furnace and stood before Pharaoh and Moses sprinkled it upward toward heaven and it became boil breaking forth with blain upon man and beast and the magicians could not stand before Moses because of the boils for the boil was upon the magicians and on the Egyptians he took the ashes and he said throw them towards heaven stand over here stand over here I need you if you're here today I don't know I just felt this in the Holy Ghost I put it in my notes this afternoon if you're here today and you've got some ashes, I need you to, I need you to say, I've got some ashes of a dream. I've got some ashes of, of some things in my life. Pastor, the devil has told you your field is burnt over, that there's no hope for revival. He said, reach down and grab the ash. Reach down and grab the ashes of Norway. Stop right there. Stay down. Grab the ashes of Germany. Grab the ashes. Grab the ashes. Grab, reach down. Come on, little rock. Grab your ash. Grab it. Stay down. Stay down. He said, now. He said, once you have the ash, he says, here's what you do. Take the ash. Do it again. 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 And the ash began to fill the air became particles and rain. Oh, I wish I had somebody that would throw your hands up in the air and say, my ash is my worship. He's the God. He's going to give you revival, pastor. He's going to give you revival. You've just got to keep praying for the unseen face. Every pastor of a church, would you come in line across the front? Every pastor, if you're a pastor out there leading a church, I want you just to raise your hands right now. Raise them all across this building. I'm about to pray. And when I begin to pray, I'm going to ask God, as he told me this morning, I, I, I'd fully intended on, I'd prepared something that probably had you on your left ear spinning backwards. But I woke up at 6.05 this morning, the Lord said, they're spoiled and I'm going to give them a new and a fresh burden. I know we, we might shout before it's over, but right now, before we leave this camp, there's some of you, your burden has waned. Come on. And you've become comfortable where you're at. You've got your nice truck. You've got a nice house. You've got a nice car. You've got a good business. Life is good. You give a little bit to the missionary. Things are good. But I've come to tell you when we leave this house tonight, uh, there's going to be a refreshing of the burden that God has placed upon you for your city. Uh, and you're going to leave this place saying, I've got to have revival. 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 I've got to have revival.
Every man of God, every pastor of the gospel, I want you just to link up arm in arm with your neighbor right now. I would like the church to extend their hands towards these men of God. You have worshiped. You have praised God for your family, your body, your friends, your business, your money. But right now, here's what you're going to do. You're going to extend your hands, and in just a moment, you're going to begin to shout unto God with a voice of victory. And it is as you begin to shout with triumph, I said as the congregation begins to shout with a voice of triumph, a fresh fire. There's a weariness. that is. There's a spirit of vexation that is got into you that's vexed you with weariness in the preachers of this generation as they fight back in one of the darkest hours of humanity but strength is about to come into you every eye is closed extend your hands towards these men of God father in the name of Jesus Christ I pray now to the angels of the cities of which you have appointed them in to lead against the prince and principality the rulers in darkness that have established themselves over their city I speak in the name of Jesus and I rebuke every spirit of weariness. I pray that a lifting would come. That Father, the spirit of heaviness would be overtaken as a garment of praise. Rest upon your man. I release, Father, boldness, a refreshing, a renewing in the Holy Ghost. On the count of three, your eyes are closed. You're going to extend your hands. And then you're going to begin to shout. And it needs to sound like victory. I do not want it to be passive. I don't want it to be a yeehaw shout. I need it to be a shout of triumph from your belly. With your hands extended towards the men of God. Right now, congregation, on the count of three, as you begin to shout, men of God. Men of God, as they begin to shout. The Holy Ghost is going to fall. I want you to begin to be filled with His Spirit. I'm asking you to begin to speak in tongues. And I want you to make it consciously a new tongue. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Not a pond, not a puddle. That means it won't sound the same. It's going to be something fresh. And as you consciously begin to have a fresh sound, there's so, just you speaking in tongues. This isn't for anything but you. This is These people are about to shift power through prayer into you. You pour into them week after week after sermon after sermon. Am I right, people? Sermon after sermon. But you're about to give back to them with a shout that is going to break the strongholds. There's men of God up here that battle spirits of depression. Their wives battle anxiety. Come on. The devil comes against their families. He attacks them like you could not imagine. And I need your eyes to be closed and on the count of three a shout. One. Are you ready to release a sound of victory? Two. One, two, three. Receive it. Receive it, men of God. Receive the strength of the, of the congregation. Receive the strength. Yes! 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 That's it! That's it! Don't stop! Don't stop! Don't stop! Don't stop! Something is beginning to break! Burdens are being restored and lifted! The burden and weight of heaven is, is lifted and the burden for the lost is being restored! In the name of Jesus! That's it. That's it. Let it come. New tongue. 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 Woo! Yes! Don't shy. Yenda Mota. Yenda Taye. 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 Somebody shout Jesus. 
shout Jesus. Now, if your, if your husband is on this platform, I want you to come. If your father's on this platform, I want you to come up here right now. Quickly, quickly, quickly. I want the families of all the ministry to come. I'm asking. God is doing something in the homes. I'm going to tell you, God has given me such favor and grace. Come on, people that trust me. I want you to know I get it all the time. Come on, pastors, wives. It's an amazing attack. Come on, this, the attack is against the leadership of this movement. But I feel a strength in this house. Now, here's what we do. As they go and stand with their families, if you're a father in this house, I want you to go to your children. Dads, go to your kids right now. Get with your son. Get with your daughter. If you, Kids, if your parents are here, you need to be with them right now. I need to tell you, Dad, that your son's salvation is more important than your place of employment. I just felt to say that in the Holy Ghost, that he would rather have you work at Walmart as a greeter making $25,000 a year than never get to see you because you're always gone trying to make money. You need to come on. You need to get under the unction of the Holy Ghost, go home and raise up a family and build an altar in your house. Get with your families. I know it's a little different than what we normally do, but I, I'm, I'm tired of getting the phone calls. Pastor's wives that say, I'm not even going back to church. The burden's too heavy. Come on, it's happening. But we're going to break it in the name of Jesus. Listen to me, pastor's wife. Listen to me. You don't have to shout. You don't have to dance. You just stand there. Every time they come into this building, I want you to tell you what your pastor feels and your pastor's wife. They feel like they've got to shout and push this thing through. Am I right, preachers? Every time it's this burden. And man of God, you get the release of the high in the pulpit, but your wife does not. I said you get the release in the pulpit, but their wives do not. And right now, tonight, I'm going to pray over these women of God that the anointing that I have felt in this place, there's an anointing that comes upon this pulpit. And when you get anointed, women of God, you, you, it's like you could give me a lasso and show me the moon and I can pull it down. It's such a powerful feeling. And women of God, I know you don't get to feel it, but here's what's going to happen. I'm about to pray. And God is going to let you feel this anointing that's on me right now. And it's korobakanabasa. Come on, man of God, lay your hand on your past, on your wife's head. You do not have to feel the pressure to do anything other than what you want to do. I said you do whatever you want. If you want to stand there, nobody's going to judge you. If you want to just stand there and raise your hands and cry, if you want to stand there and just soak it in, come on, we're going to do the shout. I know you're tired. I know you're tired. But we're going to do the shouting. We're going to do the dancing. We're going to do the praising so that these people can have a breakthrough on the last night of camp meeting because God is about to renew a burden for the unseen faces at, at Little Rock Camp Meeting. Look at these beauty. If you love your family, first family, I want you to begin to pray right now. We have shouted for your man of God. Now we're about to shout for your pastor. We're about to shout for your pastor's wife. And you're going to begin to intercede in this shout. There's going to be a sense of intercession, a deep sense of intercession that comes over you. You're going to start feeling it. It's deep. It'll be a travail that comes. I want you to open your mouth with groanings that cannot be uttered and begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost right now. You don't need a countdown. Just pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray for your pastor's wife. Pray for their kids. Pray for strength. That's it. That's it, women of God. There's strength being endued into your bodies, being poured out. Randa Korea Basia.
man of God, speak over your I know you've named your church. I know you've cast the vision for 2022. I know you've named the vision for the youth group. I know you've named the vision for the kids ministry. I know you've named the vision for your bus ministry. I know you've got named the vision. But name it over your family. Speak the purpose over your kids. Come on, Dad. Start speaking it. Start speaking it over your family. Strength. 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 I rebuke the spirit of suicide. I rebuke the spirit of death that would hold captive the mind of the strongest. Release it in the name of Jesus. Lift up your voice. Come on, congregation. Come on, all the congregation. There's something here right now. God is giving you a burden for your man of God. God is giving you a burden. God is giving you a burden. No, you're about to feel it. You're about to feel a burden. Come on, as God helps you, allows you to have the gift of helps and carry it. That's it, dads, I need to hear your voices a little louder. Mia and I need to hear your voices over the sounds of your wives. There needs to be a deep roar that comes out of this building. Oh, there needs to be the sound of a man of God. Come on, 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 man of God. After you've prayed for your family, brother, I want you to turn and start praying for another man. Woman of God, I want you to turn to a mother. And I want you to begin to pray with that man of God. You don't have to shout. I know you're tired. I just need you to use your mouth. Come on, woman of God. Turn to that other woman and begin to speak life over her. Begin to speak freedom over her mind. Come on, there's people in this room, Pentecostals, Holy Ghost field. Come on, and you're battling with thoughts you never thought you would think. Come on, you're overridden with guilt and you're serving God out of a sense of guilt. Come on, but God is about to deliver you from that and fill you. He, uh, Yes, yes. Something is brewing. Something is steeping. There's about to be an explosion and a release. Oh, there's about to be a release. That's it. Chakoromahaya. Push just a little harder. Lift your voice just a little lower. Let there be a sound. Let there be a sound. Yeah. You don't have to say words. You don't have to speak in tongues. You can let groaning, let it come out of you. Let it come, let it come. Yeah. Oh, there's a sound of Pentecost. The sound of deep waters healing, restoring, refreshing, renewing in the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Teenager with a teenager begin to pray. Young lady with a young lady begin to pray. Oh, that's it in the Holy Ghost.
Somebody shout Jesus. Jesus. Ministry, ministry, I feel to do this. I want you right where you're at. I want you to release your family for just a moment. I want you to spread out a little bit. I want you to embrace the family around you. I want every family, I want us in a circle. I want us in a circle. I want every family connected to the next family. Brothers with brothers, sister with sister. Hey, ministry teams out there, I need some brother, pastors with pastors. Uh, families with families. I need you. If you're a minister, get up on this platform. Come on, it's last night. We're family. Come on. Come on, it's family. It ain't, it ain't, it ain't, it ain't, it ain't no big eyes, little eyes. Get up on here. If you're a preacher, I want you up here. Now, here's what's going to happen. You have just poured into them and something's about to, there's a spirit of unity that's going to take place on this platform in just a minute. Uh, and we have preached holiness all week long, but I'm telling you what God's about to put in. No use to be holy and not be happy. Joy is about to come into this building, uh, and there's going to be a happiness. Uh, as you begin to speak in tongues in just a moment, you prayed for your wife, you've prayed for your children, you've prayed for your neighbor. They are going to continue to pray. I want you to get in a circle. I want family with family, brothers with brothers. Open up your arms. Uh, come on. No, I don't want six circles. I want it to be one big circle. Giant. Make it one giant circle. Everybody's connected. You have to spread out. Get them up in here. Here's, that's what we're going to do. You're going to pray, and as we begin to pray, I feel the Holy Ghost out here. You're about to be inundated with joy. Are you ready to receive the joy of the Holy Ghost on the last night? You don't, I know you're tired. I'm not asking you to shout, but I'm asking you in a moment to let the joy, and as you begin to speak in tongues, a smile is going to come into your face, and you're going to feel a happiness. I said you're going to start feeling happy. You haven't been happy in years. You haven't smiled and just rejoiced in the Lord in a long, long time. So it's about to happen. With your eyes closed, come on, saint of God, this is for you, joy. And that joy is going to bubble over into this platform. I want this group right here. Look across this right here. Look at the unity. Brother Holmes, go ahead and just lay your hands on them. El Bishop, lay your hands on them, Bishop. In the That's it now. Right out here. Come on, saints. You poured out into them. And the joy of the Lord is coming into to this entire building. I feel it in the Holy Ghost. There's joy unspeakable and full of glory. Let it come, let it come, let it come. You've prayed for everybody. Just speak in tongues for you. Just speak in tongues. That's it. That's it. There's a unity of the body on this platform. I rebuke every spirit of discord and disunity. I pray, dear God, that our differences that are minor would be set aside for the advancement of the global mission to advance the kingdom of God. I rebuke every spirit of criticism. I rebuke every lie that's spoken against us from those nearest us. I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Let a bond be forged on this platform tonight that links this group together for the harvest that you have anointed, appointed, ordained this group of people for. I bind it in the name of Jesus. Every spirit that lies, whether of man or adversary, in El Kodabaha, spirit of jealousy and envy, be gone. Let the insecurity be addressed and removed. He that's it men of God we are linked together we're in this together you're not by yourself you're not fighting alone you're in it together that should begin to worship let the gifts of the spirit begin to operate on this platform let the gifts of the spirit begin to operate in that sanctuary God is moving
That's it, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, First Pentecostal Church. Thank you, believers, for creating a place where ministry can come. Thank you, God. I pray your favor over these people right now. I thank you for the hours they've served. I thank you for the countless hours they've put in cooking and cleaning and serving so that we could come, so the ministry can come and not have to worry about where they're gonna, who they're going to pray for. They could just come and be refreshed. And now, Lord, I just pray for a double 
double portion of your power for a wonderful spirit of joy and peace, uh, favor to come upon this church uh, and every believer uh, in the name of Jesus uh, receive the strength of the Holy Ghost. Uh, thank you for giving for Pentecostal. Thank you for the years you give uh, so that these people can come uh, from all across the world uh, and be strengthened and refreshed. Uh, I love you. I love you. I love you. Lift your hands. Uh, come on and just love Jesus. Uh, it's the last night uh, and I come and the joy of the Lord is here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're so excited tonight to baptize Brother Evander Bailey. And someone invited him to church tonight. God's working in his life. He wants to be baptized in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because you've repented of your sins in obedience to the holy word of God, I now baptize our brother in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of all of his sins.
time we've had in the Holy Ghost. There's nothing like being in camp meeting and worshiping God. I turned to Brother, I believe it was Brother Bishop Wilson, and uh, said, the good thing about this camp meeting, when you leave and go back home, I'm believing it. Every one of us are going to take it with us. We're going to be greater workers for God, better preachers. What about better saints? When you get back home, would you let your leader know, your pastor know, just how much you appreciate them? Would you do that? Everybody do that. Let me see your hand. Come on. All right. Amen. Don't forget to pray for them and love them and hold them up. Bless them. Amen. Thank God for them. They're the most important. It's not your doctor. It's not your lawyer. It's the man of God that God has placed in your life. Thank God for them. Well, what a great time in the Holy Ghost. And I was sure hope, my, what we've heard tonight, have we not heard a word from the Lord? Thank you, Brother Tuttle, for obeying the Holy Ghost. He always, always does it. And we're, uh, and, uh, this day is a very special day. In fact, 20 years ago, we were in uh, McManville, Oregon, and the pastor of this church, was uh, saying, I do. I want them to step out here in their family, his family. Amen. We have been blessed with Sister Holmes. What a blessing she has been. Come on out here, y'all. Come on out here where they can see. Come on. Come on, Benson. Come on, Camilla. Come on, Beatrice. Amen. You know, um, I said, uh, thankful for my grandson he came over the other night to spend the night with me and he had a, a bedding all rolled up under his arm I didn't know what what's this all about and uh, found out that he's making that 52 day fast to sleep on the floor and I was thankful he thank well we've been blessed 15 years old he's already been preaching and I'm grateful for what God has done and doing in his life. And uh, my heart is full. And I said all that to say this, they got two more children, Beatrice and Camilla. And, uh, and I'm believing God's going to call both of them to preach. <laughs> That's right. You may not believe in women preachers, and we don't really care whether you do or not. We do. Amen. And I believe God's going to do it. I believe some of my mother's grandchildren are going to preach. And I just don't know. It couldn't be better to just start with them. So I'm glad to have this opportunity. I wanted to do it before Brother Tuttle preached. And it just didn't work out right. Well, to be perfectly honest, I forgot. <laughs> That's how it didn't work out quite right. <laughs> But uh, anyway, I wanted to thank God for them and, uh, and say happy anniversary to them tonight. Thank you for spending it here. And I appreciate the way God is using this family for his glory right here at this very church. But uh, I do know what a load it is and uh, thank the Lord for it, for them, and the way that God has used them, and the way they have yielded themselves to God, and the Lord has given them strength. I want to ask you in closing, reach your hand in their direction, and would you just pray for them? God will continue, amen, to use them for your glory, for your honor. Thank you for it, God. We give you the praise, the glory. Thank you for them. Oh, yes, Lord. I give you the praise and the honor, Lord. Thank you, God, for your faithfulness. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah.
Well, we'll, we'll close out camp meeting on this. One little last story. This is Sister Camilla. Come here, hon. Uh, she did a 52-day fast. Y'all seen her up there over some of her friends to get the Holy Ghost, and, and God filled them with the Holy Ghost on the 52nd day. And by the way, where we got that is Nehemiah. Built that wall in 52 days. That's what I was preaching about. And so, Sister Camilla here, I'm afraid they can't see how beautiful you are. Baby, step out there a little. <laughs> uh, she's got a sweet spirit. She's the baby. Uh, thank God for Andrea and Roger. And uh, there too, as well, Sydney and Clara. But uh, the other day, uh, Millie was with uh, John John. That's who they call uh, they call Sister uh, Johnette, John John. It's their grandmother. And Cam Camilla, you're 10, 10 years old. She said, uh, John John, am I more like the Holmeses or like the Davies? <laughs> I hope Brother Davies is watching right now. <laughs> and Sister Johnette said, well, you know, Millie, I, I really don't know the Davies, and I really think you're more like your poppy. You got the best of your poppy. And, and she looked at John John startled, and she said, is there something bad about him? Well, you ain't heard the rest of the story. She said, I thought he was perfect. <laughs> You're dismissed in Jesus' name.